Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental distinctions in programming, variables and constants. But don't worry, we're not diving into syntax or code. Instead, as always, we're heading into the kitchen. So, imagine your kitchen shelves. On one shelf, you've got plastic food containers. You know the kind, transparent, reusable, with snap-on lids. You might use one to store spaghetti tonight, rinse it out, and put salad in it tomorrow. It's flexible. You change the contents all the time, depending on what's left over, what's fresh, or what you feel like storing. These containers are your go-to for dynamic storage. Now, right next to those, you've got sealed cans, sturdy metal tins with printed labels, sweet corn, beans, tomato soup. These are sealed in the factory. Once sealed, the contents are fixed. They won't change until you decide to open them, and once opened, they're no longer the same. You can't put new contents in and seal it back up. You've committed to what's inside. That, right there, is the essential difference between a variable and a constant in programming. A variable is like that plastic container. It's meant to be reused. One day it holds rice, the next day lentils, and then maybe it's filled with leftover curry. The outside stays the same, but the inside changes. That's the whole point of a variable. Its content can be updated, overwritten, replaced. It reflects the changing nature of data in a live, breathing program. Whether it's the current temperature, the user's latest action, or a real-time stock price, a variable holds something that's expected to change. A constant, on the other hand, is like a sealed can. Once you've put the contents in and closed it, it's done. It's stable, reliable, predictable. When you pick up a can labeled chickpeas, you know exactly what you're getting. In programming, a constant holds a value that should never change, like a tax rate, a conversion factor, or the number of days in a week. You define it once and trust that it will never be modified during the program's execution. Why does this matter? Let's say you're running a kitchen. You've got an assistant helping prep for dinner, you say. Grab the container labeled soup. Now, if soup is a plastic container and someone changed it yesterday to hold yogurt, you're in for a surprise. But if soup is a sealed can of lentil soup, you know exactly what you're getting. That's the clarity a constant offers. In programming, clarity is everything. When someone else reads your code, they want to know what changes and what doesn't. If a value is declared as a constant, they know not to expect surprises. That's powerful. It means they can rely on that value throughout the code base without second-guessing it. And the computer itself, it can optimize constants in ways it can't with variables because it doesn't have to watch them all the time. They're stable, predictable, and trustworthy. Now back to our kitchen. Imagine storing all your food in the same kind of container, unlabeled, rice today, pasta tomorrow, curry the next. You'd spend all your time opening lids and guessing. It would be chaos. But if you're clear, if you say this container is for changeable things and this one never changes, it creates order. That's what good programming does. So let's walk through some examples. Think of a recipe. The number of minutes to bake a cake, say 45 minutes, that's a constant. You're not going to change it every time the user clicks a button. It's fixed part of the logic, part of the expectation. But the current oven temperature, that might vary based on adjustments or user input. That's a variable. It changes with conditions. Or think about an online store. The discount rate might be fixed at 10%, a constant. But the user's shopping cart total, that's a variable. It changes every time the user adds or removes an item. If you mix these up, if you accidentally let the discount rate change mid-transaction, 
you've created a bug. It's like putting mystery meat into a can labelled peaches. Bad things happen. Naming helps here. In kitchens, we label things to avoid confusion. You don't label three different jars, food A, food B, and food C. You say sugar, salt, and flour. In programming, the same principle applies. If something never changes, you make that clear, not just in how it's declared, but in its name. A constant might be named in all caps, like max speed or default font. That's a signal, both to the computer and to future developers. Don't touch this. It's fixed. Whereas variables get names that suggest change, current score, username, selected item. It tells you this is something that moves, shifts, updates. And that's good. It sets expectations and helps everyone understand what's going on. Now, let's look at memory. From a performance standpoint, constants are more efficient. Since they don't change, the system can store them in a way that's faster to access. It's like stacking identical cans in a warehouse. You know what's in each one. You can line them up, count them, predict exactly how much shelf space you need. But variables. They're like containers where the contents can shift at any time. You have to keep checking what's inside. You need a system that handles change, which comes with overhead. That's not a problem. It's necessary. You need both plastic containers and cans in a real kitchen. The key is knowing which is appropriate for which job. Don't store rice in a can if you're going to want to refill it. Don't put sugar in a plastic container if you expect it to stay sealed for years. Context is everything. Let's switch metaphors for a moment. Think of a music playlist. The song currently playing. That's a variable. It changes with each track. The number of tracks allowed in a playlist. That might be fixed. A constant. One is dynamic. One is static. Or consider your home address. It can change. It's a variable. But your date of birth? That's a constant. In real life, we constantly juggle things that change and things that don't. The same applies to software. A well-designed program distinguishes between the two. That distinction is what makes code clean, safe and maintainable. Beginners often make the mistake of defaulting to variables for everything. Why? Because they seem easier. But that's like using a plastic container for everything, even when you don't need to. It opens the door to errors. On the other hand, trying to use constants where variables are needed causes frustration. Ask yourself, will this value ever change while the program is running? If yes, use a variable. If no, use a constant. One isn't better than the other. They're different tools for different needs. Let's go back to the team setting. Imagine you're working in a shared kitchen. You know that the containers on the left are flexible. The containers on the right, sealed. Now let's dig a little deeper. If variables are plastic containers and constants are sealed cans, then what happens when you treat one like the other? You've got a recipe that calls for tomato sauce and you know you've got a labelled can for it. But what if, by accident, someone had poured mango pulp into that can and sealed it back up? This is exactly the kind of chaos that poor use of variables and constants can cause in software. When writing a program, think about where you're going to store your ingredients. If you're storing today's date, that's a variable. It changes every day. Here's another kitchen example. The base price of an item on your menu. That's a constant. And sometimes, we even have containers that look reusable, but we treat them like constants. Now, a common beginner question is, why not just use variables for everything? It's easier. Would you store everything in plastic containers just because they're easier to open? Constants let the computer do its job better.
if it knows a value will never change, it can optimize. Using constants, where appropriate, also communicates intent. Think of a professional kitchen. Every chef knows where the staples are kept. Now here's another important idea. Scope. In a kitchen, some containers are personal. Others are shared. A local variable is like your personal container. Only you, in this moment, in this function, are using it. A global constant? That's like the main bottle of vinegar in the pantry. Everyone in the kitchen uses it, and everyone expects it to taste exactly the same every time. That's why it's important to choose the right location for your variables and constants. Not just what they hold, but where they live. And just like in a kitchen, you want to avoid clutter. Too many containers, too many labels, and nobody knows what's what. The best kitchens and the best programs use just enough containers with just enough clarity to keep everything efficient. Another metaphor? Sure. Imagine you're at a food truck. There's limited space and everything has to be fast and tight. The chef preps constants in advance. Cooked rice, bottled sauces, marinated meat. They don't touch those during rush hour. Instead, they assemble new orders using flexible tools. Spatulas, pans, serving trays. Those are your variables. Adaptable, responsive. Constants are your prep. Variables are your live ingredients. Use the wrong one in the wrong place and you slow the whole operation down. Let's go a little philosophical for a moment. At its heart, programming is about communication. Not just between you and the computer, but between you and every other person who might ever touch your code. That includes your future self. When you declare something as a constant, you're saying, this value is sacred. It defines the nature of this system. Do not change it lightly. When you declare something as a variable, you're inviting change. You're saying, this will evolve. Watch it closely. That's a powerful distinction. And it's one you make every time you write a line of code. Let's do one more story. A chef once had a disaster during a dinner service. Someone had swapped a sealed container of pepper with one that was actually cinnamon. Both looked similar from the outside. The result? A pepper steak that tasted like dessert. Customers were confused. The chef was embarrassed. That happened because someone treated a variable like a constant or maybe worse, mislabeled a constant. In software, those kinds of mix-ups can lead to bugs, crashes, and security issues. In real life, it leads to bad dinner service. Neither is acceptable. The lesson? Label your containers clearly. Use sealed ones for ingredients that must never change. Use open ones for things that need to flex. Know the difference. Respect the difference. Because in the end, cooking and coding are both crafts. And crafts demand care, attention, and good tools. So, to wrap it all up, think before you declare. Ask yourself, will this value change during the execution of my program? If the answer is yes, give it a flexible, clean container, a variable. If not, seal it up. Label it now. Before we close the lid on this topic, pun very much intended, there's one more idea to stir into the pot. And it's about mindset. You see, knowing the difference between a variable and a constant isn't just about syntax. It's about how you, as a developer, approach design, clarity, and even responsibility. Think of it like mise en place in a professional kitchen. That's the French term for everything in its place. Chefs don't just throw ingredients into random bowls. They prepare, measure, label, and lay out every item they'll need before the pan even hits the stove. It's not just for speed, it's for consistency, for safety, for excellence. Using constants is like preparing the ingredients you know won't change. The foundation, the non-negotiables. Using variables is like having your mixing bowls out ready to adapt 
adjust, taste and improve on the fly. Both are essential. But the discipline to know the difference, that's what makes the whole dish sing. There's also a confidence that comes with constants. When you set something in stone and the whole team trusts that stone never moves, everything built on top of it becomes more stable. Your features are easier to test, your bugs are easier to trace, and your future self, three weeks or three years down the line, will thank you. Because here's the secret. Most programming isn't about writing new code. It's about reading old code, updating it, fixing it, extending it. And when you come across a clearly named constant, you breathe a little easier. You know what it means. You know it hasn't changed behind your back. You know you can rely on it, like you'd rely on the expiry date on a sealed can. Compare that to a vague variable with no clear reason for its changes. And it's like opening a mystery Tupperware at the back of the fridge. No label, unknown age, unknown contents. You hesitate, you sniff, you squint, and you pray it's not chilly from six months ago. Clarity matters. Structure matters. And here's a final chef's tip. Just because something can be a variable doesn't mean it should. The best chefs are decisive. They don't change the salt level 10 times in one dish. They know when to commit and when to leave room for improvisation. As a developer, that's your job too. Commit to what's fixed. Label what's flexible. And design your code base the way a chef designs a well-run kitchen. With respect for the tools, the containers, and the people who have to work in that space after you. So whether you're slicing open a can of constants, or scooping leftovers into your trusty variable container, remember, it's not just about storing data, it's about setting expectations, building trust, creating flow, and crafting an experience that's as delightful to maintain as it is to build. Because great code, like great cooking, isn't just about the outcome. It's about the process, the clarity, the craft. Thanks for joining me in today's kitchen. Next time, we'll move on to one of the most powerful tools in the programming pantry, functions. Think of them as your favorite kitchen gadgets, blenders, rice, cookers, air fryers, reliable, reusable tools that take ingredients in and spit deliciousness out. Get ready to slice, dice, and modularize your thinking. Until then, keep coding like a chef.